making a manual compressed earth block machine is actually a lot more simple than people make it out to be. I mean, I made one out in the wild with no problems. My anchor point snapped. But it looks like this 2 by was split. Both of these posts are in the ground four feet deep, and this machine is just pulling them straight out. Okay, maybe there are a few problems, but today I'm going to teach you how to make your own. The first thing you're going to need is a beam to act as a lever. I know from experience that a 2x4 is not going to cut it, but a 4x4 four four or something comparable should work just fine. I use this log because I had it readily available. Now the length of the log is what's going to determine that compressive force, so I would recommend using an 8 footer or longer to maximize that compressive force. But keep in mind that as the length of the beam grows, the natural flex in the board will actually decrease the amount of force applied to the brick. Next you'll want to establish a fulcrum. Now a fulcrum is an immovable point so that your lever can pivot. The force of this machine is enough to rip out any post you put into the ground, so I would recommend using something like the base of a dead tree like I did here, or the base of your house, or even attaching the fulcrum to your mold would be fine. Just remember that the fulcrum is meant to be immovable, so any movement at all will actually significantly reduce the amount of force that you're able to get out of the machine. With your fulcrum set up, your next big step is the mold. For the mold, wood is actually a bad option because it expands and contracts as the moisture is absorbed into the wood. So I just went with a bag of concrete and for the super simple design, it's just a square with another smaller square inside of it. And then on the underside, we have this channel so that this 2x4 can slide in and out. Super simple, works great. Just note that if you're going to use this design, make sure that you have something between the 2x4 and the concrete when you pour it, or else you won't be able to get this 2x4 out of there. And unless you're doing some complicated machinery, this press is going to push the bricks straight through the mold. So make sure that there's nothing in the way or you'll end up deforming the bricks as they come out. Alright, so if you have your mold, your beam, and your fulcrum, all that's left is to put it together. Like with all class 2 levers, the closer you are to your fulcrum, the more force is going to be exerted into the brick. But the closer you are, the higher you'll have to lift the beam. So it's kind of a trade-off there. I put mine about a foot out, that way I wouldn't have to lift the beam so high whenever I did anything. And there you go, you're ready to make some bricks. But before you go, here are some pro tips. You can use pretty much any soil you want and still get decent bricks, but there are two things that are vitally important. Number one, the more uniform the soil, the better the brick. This means that there are no rocks, chunks, or random dry spots. If any of these are in there, it'll end up cracking the brick as it dries, and that's just not very useful. And number two is that moisture content is king. You don't want wet soil, or dry soil for that matter, and with each soil type, there's an optimal moisture content level. But as a general rule, if you can see the water in the soil, or if the soil sticks to your hands as you pick it up, then it's too wet. And if the soil doesn't hold form when you try to compact it with your hands, then it's just a little too dry. And also, if the bottom of your bricks are cracking as they come out of the mold, that means your soil is too wet. And if they're crumbly when dry, well, you get the picture. Anyway, I hope you learned something, and if you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments below. I check that pretty frequently. So, until I see you in the field, happy hunting.